Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Metro Home Theater Detectives. I can't even get past the first line today. <laughs> right. I'm Brent McCall. I'm Adam Rogers. And welcome. So, tell us about today's show, Adam. Well, today's show, we're going to be talking about something that's near and dear to all of our integrators' hearts. Well, before we get going, what's today's sponsor? Today's sponsor is the letter M for mounts. Oh, and what's today's show? Today's show, we're talking about mounts. A very special thing that we, we're finally getting a chance Horse to talk mounting, about. Horse um... mounting, Taxidermy mounting, um, TV mounts, TV and, mounts. And in particular TV mounts, the things that we sell, not the you know horse mounting or anything else like that. We, that Metro doesn't do any of that. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, yes, we're talking about TV mounts today. Uh, we have, of course, the TV behind us is mounted on one of our mounts. Of course, is one of our FM XL 75s. Uh, and today's episode is brought to you by a specific mount. We have today with us here is the FML 642. So we're going to be talking about this one today, just to kind of get things started off with. Brent, what is this? What is this mount? This is our... Well, now, this is a Super Duty. Yep. Full extension, full motion mount. Now, the really nice thing about this mount is the weight capability of this exceeds pretty much anything you're going to buy today. Right. And it has quite an extension range on it. I right. believe this one goes out to a little over 18 inches. Yes, it does. Full extension, which yep. is still short compared to that one. Yes. But this covers the vast majority of jobs that are out there. Right. So this is kind of our go-to one for the articulated mounts. We just want to kind of show you guys this one, uh, get you guys to, uh, to call up your reps and whatnot, talk to your distributors and, and everybody to find out pricing on that. And it's available to you. Real quick, we're going to open it up and we're going to look at some of the quality of the stuff Before we do that, because there's something I want to talk about on the top of this. Sure. And that's that right there. Now, people tend to get caught up in this number. Right. Don't. Right. So that's actually going to be one of the things that we're going to talk about uh, later on in the episode today is the actual uh, what specs should we be looking at. Uh, and in fact, we'll use this one as, as an example to that. So let's go ahead and open it up real quick. We'll go show everybody here what now, it we're looks socially like. socially distancing, I'm going to step You're gonna back while he does this. There we go. So we'll go ahead and pop this open here, and I'm going to switch over to the top-down shot. There you go. So you guys can see this here, nice and shiny in the packaging and everything else. You've got all your different brackets and everything that you need, or probably the hardware that you would need to get it mounted to the TV. But most importantly, what we're going to talk about today is just the structure of this, because when you take this out, we'll do that. Brent, if you would grab that box, I'm going to set this right here on top. There we go. So when we're looking at this, we really kind of just want to look at the different things that are available on this mount. So we have the ability for the mount itself to slide side to side after the arm is extended. This is actually at the TV, which is kind of an, an interesting feature that you don't see on a lot of other mounts. These four set screws here, you can actually loosen these and this bracket can actually slide ever so slightly uh, side to side. Now you don't normally want to mess with that and change that because you do want it to be centered as much as possible. However, it's available if you run into a situation where the weight of the TV somehow gets shifted over to one side or the other, on uh, after the mount is extended. So that's something that, that you can So you can modify. fine tune after extension. Exactly. So some other features on this mount, of course, as well, are we have the uh, tool list design back here. So you can actually loosen or tighten the uh, the armature on this so that you can actually extend it or, or and that swivel is it and everything else. And a double arm mount. It is a double arm mount. Ar arm mount. Let me, let me. There we go. Thank you very much. Ah. So. Remember also that you, these toolless designs do have uh, a standard Phillips head here on the end of it. So if you do need the extra torque in order to get that to move the way that you want it to, it's available. But the nice thing about this is that you can move this without any tools whatsoever. So the consumer or whoever it is that's using it, if they don't have the tools on them, they, doesn't, they don't have to worry about grabbing the tools just to loosen that up for a it. A quick question before you go any further is I'm looking at the bottom of this. Does this one have the detachable head where you can mount the back and then hang this on it? This does not. So this one here, the, what will happen is uh, it's actually in this box here. So it'll come with the arms that actually get attached to the TV. So this bracket here will be attached to the wall first. You'll attach the arms to the back of the TV. And then from there, then you'll hang the TV on, the, on these brackets here, on those arms. So with that in mind, let's talk about mounts. What you got? I just never tried it out. No, actually, I haven't. I've installed a number of those. I've never installed this one. There you go. So it's kind of exciting. Okay, so just so you do know, mm -hmm. you can, in fact, remove this front head to make it easier to oh, install. Oh, you can. Well, look at that. That's Something what I, I didn't even know. Okay, now, 
what this means, everybody, is that when you're doing the install of this with the Allen keys that is included, I believe. Yes, they are. Yep. You can remove this front head and remove this entire weight off of the mount. So when you're going to actually put it on the wall, right. you don't have to worry about the weight of this headpiece right. in order to mount it on the wall. Correct. Yeah. Which is another tip, in, uh, tip that we're going to talk about um, further on in, into the show, uh, the different ways to help you mount these to the wall and some different tricks and stuff that, that you can do to, to make that easier on yourself. So with that in mind, uh, Brent, you kind of alluded to it earlier. Um, we, uh, we get a lot of questions about, you know, what's the best way to pick the correct mount for the project that they're working on. You know, we've got a TV here. This is a 70 inch or 65 inch TV. Uh, I think it's 65, right? 65 inch Sony. Uh, I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. Yeah. So we got a 65 inch TV here uh, and it's a very large TV. What's the spec that I should be looking for when we're just well, picking out this here? can I move this, this back here? here? Yes, we can. Okay. Let's get it out of the way. Got it? I do. As always, everybody, Please, 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 thank you again for checking in with us today. Um, if you have any questions or comments during the show today, leave them down in the chat. Or if you're, check if you're catching up with us after this goes live and you're reviewing it after the fact, uh, feel free to leave it down in the comments. We always uh, keep up with those as well. Uh, and again, if it has nothing to do with what we're talking about today, that's perfectly fine. We are here for you as tech support, so we're happy to talk about that as well. So, And thank you for killing time while I cleaned. Yeah, of course. The most important things to look at as an integrator when you're looking at a mount, there's three really important things. Right. The first thing we have to concern ourselves with is the weight of the television. The weight. The, just the flat out weight of the television. Right. Now, weight is important not just for sheer weight on the wall, right. but when you pull a full motion mount out and that full motion comes out, whatever the weight of that TV is, it effectively magnified. increases dramatically as you come off the wall. Right. So if you have an 80 pound television, you really want to go with something that's got a minimum of 50% more headroom. Right. So you're looking at a 120 pound mount minimum. I don't care that the TV's only 80. Right. And most TVs honestly aren't anywhere near the 80 pounds no. today, which is great because uh, you know back in the day we had the plasma TVs that you know you you needed three people to to take it up the stairs yep. and uh, to set so it up in their house. Number one is weight. Wow, the board's still wet. Here you go. Do this. Try that one. There you go. Number one is weight. Really, that's the first thing you have to look at. Right. Number two is VESA pattern. So what about the size? Well, the size is not really critical anymore because the TVs have gotten so light. Right. Now, where size does come into play is the bigger the TV is, particularly the thinner the television. Right. And our Sony's a good example of this, as are the OLEDs from Sony right, and right. The LG. You have to think about things. Dropping stuff everywhere. Yes, I am. When you <laughs> move that mount. Right. They're just alive today. You know, in the old days, you'd grab the TV at the bottom and pull out. Right. You do that now on the OLEDs or the thinner Sony's, and that TV's just going to go snap. Yep. So you have to look at things like, if you're going to do a full motion, can you in fact get to the top and the bottom of that TV? Right. Now, there is a job that you and I have both worked on recently yep. that has a full motion mount on all the televisions. Yes. We put that on there for service behind the set. And I very much encourage doing that. Yeah. Because particularly if you're doing any uh, hardware, Apple TVs, Roku's, satellite receivers, or automation control boxes mm -hmm. behind the television, and that's where you want to put them. Yep. Putting it right behind a fixed mount or a tilt mount means you have to take the whole TV off. Exactly. To service it. Whereas if you can just pull it out and give it a tilt, and the reason we do that here and what you guys don't see is all of our wires behind this that you just kind of see draping around for testing purposes, but the same thing applies to any device you have behind the television. Right. So in a lot of, in a lot of aspects, when we go to, to uh, at you as the installer, as the dealer goes out and designs these systems for people and you're trying to select the correct mount to use for it, remember also, like Brent was saying, what devices are going to be behind the TV? Are you going to need to access that TV even once a year uh, to make it easy enough to get back behind that TV? Because if it's on an articulated mount, and you don't have to take the TV off of the mount, that means less chance of you dropping the TV and damaging it. 
So yep. if you never have to get back behind that TV, you never have to worry about it again until they swap out the TV for a different one, great. Go for that flat mount, go for that, that uh, tilt mount up against it that way. It works really well for it and leave it that way. But if there's any chance that you have to uh, get behind it, or I recommend, it. or service it, I recommend putting an articulated mount on there. I try to do articulating whenever possible, uh, as that actually creates the best possible scenario for if I have to do anything I mean, involved with articulatings it. Articulatings are not that much more expensive mm -mm. than a fixed mount. Right. The thing that we do recommend when you're doing an articulated mount is try to do a recessed cavity. Right. So the TV looks flushed in. Yep. It just works out better. Because, you know, by the time you throw in an Apple TV, an Xbox One X, which is tomorrow's job. Yep. All that stuff winds up back behind there. And in theory, the customer should never have to touch it. But stuff happens. Yep. It happens. So with that in mind, the second thing that's most important is the VESA, VESA pattern. pattern. And it's a VESA or VESA or VESA uh, or... You know, you and I have discussed this. It's V-E-S-A, so call it what you yeah, want. Yeah, so we'll give you guys a, a shot down. You should be familiar with this. The, the VESA, 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 V-E-S-A pattern. Uh, if you guys wanted to correct me in that in the comments, go ahead and, and tell me how that's pronounced correctly. Because we don't know. I don't, I, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've been doing this for a long enough that I really don't know. I've used every used different way Vesa, to describe you it. You call it VESA, and so I just... It just kind of yeah. is all over the place. So... That's honestly the number one thing that's the most important is the weight. Because as always, when you're going to mount something on somebody's wall, we don't want that thing to come well, off the wall without us there. Well, that takes me to number three. Okay. Stud spacing. Stud spacing. Okay, I got the wrong black one it's, again. It's up there. With stud spacing, there's... 16 inch on center, 24 inch on center, and in some of the newer houses, we've seen 30 inch on center where they're cutting cost. Right. And that's really critical because depending on the stud spacing determines the width of the back mount. Right. I don't care what you see on the do-it-yourself home shows. Do not hang your television with zip it toggles or those little hooks that yeah. stick in the wall and bend down. So we include in all of our mounts uh, in the packaging, we do include the hardware for actually using the, the no stud option. Well, that's really meant to go into masonry. Right. Not so no stud. That's what these are, are meant for. They're not meant for being drywall. put into drywall with no stud. These are meant for mason work. So this gives you the ability for these uh, uh, lag bolts to be put in through those to go into the masonry to hold them in place. You really don't want to use these as a way to mount the TV to the drywall. Or because, toggle ears. Or toggle ears because the drywall itself does not have the strength necessary to hold a TV. No, you can a pull TV. butterflies. You'll, yeah. you'll see guys using butterflies, which is the spring-loaded piece that the bolt goes through, and you clamp it down, and you slide it in the hole. Right. Now, I have seen guys use these to reasonable effect if the mount has at least one stud effectively in the middle. Right. Where they can lag down there. Yeah. So there's solid lag. So the, mall, the, the mount's not coming off the wall. Then you can put butterflies. I would not use zippets. I would not use any of the drywall screw stuff or the, right, right. the punching those hooks that we've seen. Or yep. the, then you can use large. Very large. Because you want to spread that weight out in the drywall. It's not this way. It's this way that becomes the problem. Right. And you all have seen, actually, I should have found that picture um, of the, the, the fail where the guy had it mounted to the, to the drywall, didn't have it secured into the stud, and an hour later, the, he gets a picture back from the client, and the TV is on the ground with the drywall still, on still attached to the, to the mount itself. So Yeah. Studs are important. Very now, important. And if you're doing a commercial building with metal studs. Yes. This becomes a tad bit iffy because metal studs are meant to shear weight this way, right? not this way. Right. Um, if you know you're going to be doing that, I'm going to clean this up again real yeah, quick. Yeah, go for it. There you go. If you can get in early enough in pre construction and you know you're going to be doing that and there's metal studs, mm -hmm. assuming this is a top view of the metal stud, right. we recommend that you put a 2x4 inside of that stud. Inside of it to the front side, screw with drywall screws and construction adhesive. Right. 
Don't just hit it with screws, hit it with construction adhesive as well. Yeah. This will give you the strength that you need to maintain the integrity of that stud right. when you hang it. And don't make it just tall enough for the mount. Yeah, extend it out yes. much longer. Because yes. you want to, when it comes to mounting something to something else, it's not about the mounting point where it's at. You're trying to spread that force of the device across as, as large, large a space as, possible. as you possibly can. So that's why Brent was saying, if you if you are working a metal stud, you know you're working on metal studs before they put the drywall up, put in that piece of, of uh, two by two four, by four, go ahead and, and extend it out, put a, put a full six foot piece of two by four in there if you can. And then at that point, then you can go in afterwards and feel confident that you're gonna have something solid to attach to. If you cannot, and we see this particularly in medical buildings or commercial buildings, mm -hmm. where they go in afterwards, the building's eight, 10 years old, it's like, I want a TV there and they don't want a 24 inch television that fits on a single full motion arm. They, 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 yeah, want, they, they want, want a 65 inch, right? Let's face it, they're $449 now. Yeah, they're cheap. <laughs> you Why wouldn't it easy, you? Easy. Um, there's a couple of things you can do there that are very effective. One that I will typically do, honestly, is just cut the drywall out completely and put in three quarter inch plywood yep. and secure it to the studs. This gives you a couple of things. First off, it gives you a place to match your power and all your connections. Right. Secondly, it spreads that weight out big time, and particularly, again, on metal studs. Metal studs are meant to support this way. Up and down. Not this way. Right. So anything you can do to spread that weight out is a plus. And butterflies, don't yes. just use screws into them, because nope. it will shear out of that metal. Exactly. The butterflies are a big plus. Yeah, so if you can't get into the drywall, you can't go, you know, do like Brent said and cut out a piece to put a piece of plywood on there, the bigger the uh, the butterflies that you can put in there uh, to spread that weight out uh, uh, across that piece of metal. Opening. Yeah, um, it's, you, you really should do it. Um, I think the largest that I ever hung on a, uh, on a, uh, a metal stud in construction was uh, it was a 50 inch but it was a 50 inch plasma so it was probably about probably right at about 100 pounds uh, see i go back to tube days yeah and on the tube days not only did you have the weight you also had it it was sticking out axis. right right so, so you had the extra yeah, the extra and, force and of it hospitals and gyms loved the metal studs oh geez so we had to do a lot of work to hang those well it's like can't you just hang them out it's like no. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> short answer, yes, but it's going to take a lot more than just putting it up there like yeah, you normally no, would on a regular no. stud. So anyway, so now what about, uh, and again, everybody, um, thank you again for checking in with us. Leo, it's great to see you as always, my friend. It's, hey, uh, Leo. We, we really appreciate it. Um, I don't see Ellen on there yet, but Ellen, if you're there, it's great to see you. Um, the, uh, uh, let's see, he's saying the flat display mounting interface, FDMI, also known as VESA mounting interface standard, uh, or colloquially as of the VESA mount, is a family of standard def standards defined by the video electronic standard. Oh my goodness, you gave me the whole thing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just reading it. Video Electronic Standards Association. It? Yeah, it doesn't give me a, a, pronunci a pronunciation. I know, yeah, I know, it's, I know who, it was created by what used to be, it's now the CTA, it was the CEA or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back to this for a couple of minutes because okay. there's a few things on here that are awesome. Now, Adam mentioned the tool is tied out. Right which these just a spring loaded, they come out and you can move them back and forth to tighten it. Right. But there's a couple of other things on here that are real nice that we want to talk about. First off are the plastic wire guides. These make everything just cleaner and simpler in the mount. Because you want to be able to pull your HDMI cables, your power cables, any interconnect cables, right. your sound bar cables. Right. You don't want them just dangling down much like our test bench here. And that, why do they dangle down here? Because we work. I'm constantly changing something, so don't don't judge my my wire oh, management. Please do, please do. My wire management. Um, please uh, send your your comments, your thoughts, <laughs> and your abuses to what's your email address? Adam R at Adam Metro, R Home Theater. Metro Home Theater. Yes, I'm please. happy to hear it. Um, now, other things to look at when you're looking at a mount. Obviously, we're very proud of ours. Yes. Because ours are designed by custom integrators. We go out and we do the installations still. Right. Look at the quality of the welds. Make sure it's a smooth, clean, no burrs, no bad spots, because that indicates not a lot of attention to detail, and it could bite you in the butt because that weld point could break if it's not done correctly. Right. If you ever do any kind of inspections into how the, uh, let's say for instance, submarines. When you, if you ever watch the videos about how they put the submarines together and how important it is the stress fractures in the weldings are, 
um, while we're not trying to keep out millions of pounds of pressure from you know killing us in, in a submarine, we are trying to make sure that we keep a TV mounted on the wall and not fall down and potentially hurt somebody. We don't want to do that. So these are things to look out for. The, the strength of the welds, the quality of the welds, the quality of the material itself that's being made, you can run into very, very, very thin uh, designed and, and uh, designed mounts that unfortunately they don't have the, the, the structural integrity to hold up in a TV even as light as they are now. It is something to be very important. It's very, very important to monitor that and make sure you have a good, a good mount for We've that. We've all heard horror stories of major manufacturers having fails right. in the mounts. The first thing you want to look at, if you can give me the overhead again for a second, yep. is right there. Make sure there's a UL mark or an ETL mark. Yep, exactly. That is not, UL and ETL do not test how good the mount is as a TV mount. Right. They could care less. Yep. What they're doing is they are ascertaining does that product meet all of the legitimate safety standards exactly. of that product? Is it sturdy enough? Is the metal heavy enough? Is it going to flex? Is it going to bend? Is there going to be deflection? Right. Now, as a company, when we do testing of mounts, Stuart, the gentleman who's never on the camera, <laughs> Stuart and I have a, a test rig set up where, for example, full motion mount like this. Yep. We ran it out to full motion, ran it at 75% above its rated max. Yep and then we put a deflection meter on it. And it stayed there for six months. Yep. We allow two degrees of deflection. Yep. That's it over a six month period at 75% above weighted rate. Right. Before it becomes a mount in the home theater catalog. Right. Now this is not because, we're, we're not telling you this now because, oh, don't listen to the weight you know, requirements of the mount itself. No, no, no. No, not at all. We're just ensuring you to, to know that if you put something on there, it's not, ours. it's it, for our mounts anyways, if you do mount something using our mounts, if you are right at the limit of that, just be aware that you are going to be fine because we do test them beyond that. But in order to ensure the protection of everybody involved, we lower that down for the use of and the mount itself. And don't be And don't what? Don't be right at the limit. Oh yeah, don't, yeah. If you're at 125 pounds, do not put a 132 pound mount up. Right. Put a 175 pound mount right up. so brent we talked about the and the most important specs of course being the weight uh of weight. course we talked about after that of course then the comes the vesa uh the, the size wasn't even it, it's very low on it's that very list low on the list and i'll tell you why okay when you're looking at the tvs now even the heavier ones are no longer heavy right the only thing you have to concern yourself with on size honestly mm -hmm. is the weight as it gets off center right now much like a full motion coming out remember how the weight increases yep the further out the weight goes the more it affects it for example you will have um single arm full motion mounts right they will have a fairly high weight rating i would do that with a smaller set i would not put a 65 inch on it even though it's well within the weight rating right be simply because of this on a single arm a smaller TV, if it's not dead straight, you don't notice it as much. Right. You really don't. Right, right. But when that TV gets further and further and further out, one degree here quickly becomes visible here. Yes. That's the difference. When you look at a two arm like this, yep. the weight does not not necessarily go up before because of the second arm. What you get with the second arm is more lateral stability. Right. You don't get the flexing of the arm right. itself. So it's not overall strength, it's lateral stability. Right. As always, everybody, please put your questions and comments down in the chat. We're happy to talk about it today. Um, and thank you again, Leo, for giving us that. <laughs> I, I want to hear you say the word. Yeah, so there you go. It's recording you saying the word. Uh, I hang on every moment, of, uh, every, mo every mount. I mount full extension, maybe 30 to 50%. Uh, if my bad word doesn't rip it off the wall, it passes the Leo test. So Leo's actually doing that thing the where he thing himself is hanging um, well, on the mount we itself. Have one of our local dealers yep. that uses our mounts exclusively and on his Facebook page, he will run the mounts out and Hang he, on hang, he hangs on them and yeah. puts a photo with his legs. Yeah. Planking his legs out, which obviously at my age, there's no uh, way yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> he gets his workout doing it. Yeah. So Brent, um, 
when to use the different kinds of mounts. Now, before we talk about when to use each one, let's talk about which ones are out there, right? Okay. So we've talked about the articulating mounts or the full motion mount. That's what we showed off here today. Um, that's what we have on this TV here. Again, the reason that I use the full motion mount here is because I'm constantly behind this TV making changes to the wiring. Now. And when he says constantly? At, at least once a day. Yeah. At, at least once a day I'm, I'm behind that there TV. Are basically three kinds of mounts. Oh, are you going to draw it? Look at you getting artsy. There is flat mount. Right. And typically low profile because everybody wants it to be as close to the wall as, as they can. As small as possible, yep. Then there's a tilt mount, right. which will generally allow you to range anywhere from zero to About 15, 15 degrees. Yep. And then you've got an articulated mount. Right. Now this can be a single arm or a double arm. Right. It could be anywhere from eight inches out to our longest one like this is 32 inches of extension. Right. And you have to look at application. For example, you're going into a bedroom bedroom situation where the TV's just going to go on the wall. Right. Um, the bed's fairly tall. There's not even a need for a tilt. You can go at the low profile. Boom, everybody's happy. It's right. not sticking off the wall. The wife's thrilled. Right. You're going into maybe an area where the TV's fairly close to where you're sitting like an apartment living room or small home. Yep. You're sitting on a couch, the TV's up a little higher. You have to have a tilt to bring it down. Right. Because you don't want to... Right, yeah, you don't want to have the... Well, because the, the other thing is, is that, of course, when you're... Of you. When you're sitting down lower, if you have any kind of ceiling lights or, or whatever it is, they're going to want to reflect off that TV back at, uh, back at you watching it. And most of the time, it's at the perfect angle where you're, all you're seeing is just that light that's reflecting off of it. Um, so then, doing that, that tilt allows you to mitigate getting rid of that, uh, that reflective surface and getting the light out of your eyes. A full motion mount allows you a lot of flexibility. Now we keep pulling this one in and out. And by the way, you'll notice I'm grabbing it top and bottom. Yes. Because it's a very thin Sony panel. Yes, it is. And they do break. Yes, they do. So the advantage of having a full extension 32 inch like this is it you can take this, am I going to snap a cable? Nope, you're going to be okay. I can go almost a full swing on this. Yeah. Now, if we had this on a corner. Now, in fact, you could actually go a little oh, bit further. Oh, wow. Yeah, thank you. Take right about there. Out. That's it, right there. Right there. Yeah. So as you can see, we can do a tremendous amount of angle on this, so you can get way off axis on this set. Right. And this is, what you guys don't see here, this is a single arm unit. This is my favorite mount that, that we carry, um, just for the and simple fact that we can go. And this is what you and I go, use yeah. on our jobs. Yep, exactly. It is my favorite mount. It's um, out of, uh, and it's not just because I work here, of course. It is my favorite mount overall. Um, this was the one that I was using when I was doing installations before I started working here. Um, it's just great. It, the single arm is nice and elegant. It also makes it nice and thin for when you push it up against the wall. It's nice and shallow. Um, a tremendous amount of flexibility. But the ability to sting, extend it out that far is great, even on a 65 inch. Um, sometimes we have, uh, like for instance, I had an installation where the client um, had a back patio that was fully enclosed with nice, uh, nice screened in area. However, their sitting area was actually 90 degrees off of the wall that they were going to be mounting the TV at. And so they wanted the ability to, ha to watch the TV from a very shallow angle from where that was going to be at. A very acute angle maybe was that the right yes, word for that acute angle and very congratulations on the I correct remembering usage. that right it's it's interesting that i actually remembered that from high school uh so a very acute angle for that and so what was nice is that using a, this mount here in particular actually we were able to bring that tv out from the wall and turn it almost a full 90 degrees to where they could see it from where they were sitting it worked out to be perfect for their application and we actually mounted on the bottom of it a sound bar on top of the weight, uh, mm -hmm. on top of the weight of the TV. So, of course, remember also the sound bars mounting those to the TV now is possible with like our sound bar mount, the uh, SBM, a, SBMW, I think, or uh, SBM something. I, I can't remember the, the model yeah, hold number. Hold on a second. Ah, yeah. SBM SW. Grab the, grab it. Pull the whole thing down here. We'll go ahead and put it on on camera. Did somebody uh, in one of our videos before actually mentioned and then, that by they the way, like this. This is available to you, the dealer. It is as a poster, and yes. this is a great. Great tool. So this thing here is really now, great. Now they're not framed. Yeah, not not very well. So let's see. 
We've got our, our sound, bo uh, sound bar mount all the way down here in the corner here, but this is a great thing because it has all of our mounts listed out here as well. Uh, it also has our tailgate TV mount here. This, honestly, I was really sad that this one didn't take off as well as it, as it did. Yeah, it showed it, but yeah, it But didn't. it's a really great idea. So if well, you guys are interested in something like that, definitely check it out. The other one that's really awesome is the FM 44 IW. Yes. So the interesting thing about this mount here is that this actually is, it has a structured wiring panel in the back of it. So you put the structured wiring panel in and then the arm is actually inside of the panel. So when you take the TV and put it flush up against the wall, it's flush up against it's the completely wall. flush up against the wall because the arm is actually inside the wall. You don't have to worry about it being in the way. So you get a very super flush design and it gives you a space to actually mount all of your equipment inside and the wall. And serviceability. And super serviceability because everything's right there. You pull the TV right, out and you have to access. There's for power and low voltage wires, everything you need in there. So when should we be looking at doing a tilt mount instead of say an articulated mount Anytime or a flat mount? Anytime the TV sits higher than center point is your eye line. Right. You should be looking at some level of tilt. Right. And typically that will be in a shorter or shallower room. Yep. You're sitting down the sofa, you're looking at the TV and it's slightly up. Yeah. Um, now, interestingly, some of those mounts will also give you a negative five degrees. Yes, so you can go the opposite low, direction. You can give yourself a little, hey. Now, usually it's like five degrees or so. Right, it's a know, three, five. Three, three to five, three, negative three to five degrees, and so you can go back the other direction yep. if you need to. So. Now, the thing that we have come across is there are one or two bizarre VESA pattern televisions. Okay. Sony has one. That's oh yeah, let's talk about the best of patterns. Tall, no, a hundred tall, two hundred wide. I, no, it's two hundred tall, one hundred wide. So it's a very, it's a very tall one versus but narrower. But, but narrow. And here's the thing: everybody wants to put that on a full motion mount. Yes. And I don't have one. Yeah. And there's one model of television from Sony that does that. Yeah. And thank you, Ellen. <laughs> yeah, Ellen. Ellen's the one that calls on it. Yep. And it yeah. will fit on you know on, on the tilt and the low profile, no problem. Yes, because those the the arms don't go as close can, as you need uh, them to yep. go. Yeah, you could go um, seventy five or less. On the full motions. Some of those do. Now, some of those do because when you look at even our uh, the TL sixty four PL that we're uh, we were talking about here, mm -hmm. this one here actually has the ability because the arms come in close, you're only limited by this back this uh, not this, get this into plate the Sony. here. That's the thing. It, this okay, so right. that doesn't even, match there. Honestly, even this one, the FM thirty two forty two, right, does not get narrow enough. It's like one ten. Ah, so it just bar right. just, just barely outside of that. And so. other than the Sony, and there were some Panasonics. You had some weird ones. Weird. Yeah. And occasionally you'll find something from Sam's or Costco under a major brand name that aren't made by that major brand name that yep. are odd. Yep. But other than that, we fit 99% of the displays out so there. So let's talk about normal VESA patterns, all right? Let's see the, the ones that we normally see. Well, we see anywhere from um, 75 at, to 75. For example, 75. we're looking at a TCL panel in front of us. Yep, that's our, that's our monitor. That's 200 by 200. Yep. This one back here, I believe, is a 400 by 600, if I remember correctly, on the Sony. Or it could be um, actually a 400 by 400 as well, um, even though it's a much larger TV. That's four by the, six. That's four by six. So mm -hmm. four hundred by six hundred. Now it is not uncommon, however, for the Sony's to be two hundred by two hundred. Right. On the smaller, the forty nines and the forty threes. Well, the weight of the TV is much lower now, right? So you don't have to worry about the needing to spread the weight out on the back of the TV. So they can get away with having those Vesa patterns, Vesa Vesa patterns closer together, to where they don't actually. Well, the other know, thing they'll the do way. is there has to be a metal plate in the television for this to happen. To right. So what they're doing is the metal plates in the back of the TVs are getting smaller and smaller to cut weight and cost. Right. So the only part of a TV that you can put that mount to right. is a metal plate. So anything they can do to cut that cost, yeah. they are. Yeah, exactly. So definitely some things to think about. Um, when you're picking out the, the mounts for the different applications, the best thing to do is to just look at the application. How do they want to use the TV? Do they care, uh, you know, uh, uh, having the TV move out from the wall? Do you, I mean, do you care about the TV moving out from the wall? Can you put a, a back box into it, a recessed enclosure? Put something behind it like that way. If you, uh, in, you know, find out is the client going to be sitting at a much lower level than where the TV is going to be mounted, where the lights that are on the ceiling are reflecting off the TV? If they're not, Put a flat mount on, on the wall. Your client's going to like it a lot. Um, my, my second favorite mount actually is our, uh, our low profile. Uh, let me switch over to that real quick and show you here. So this one here, 
This is oh, our that's such yeah. a simple install. So the the CS LP 44E and the LP 64E. These are our flat mount uh, flat mounts that single only bar. have a single bar along the top, so they don't have a, a dual bar back plate. They actually just have a single bar across the back. Now, the nice thing about this is that even though it's just a single bar, it's still up to 100 pounds for the 44E and 150 pounds for the LP64E. It's a heavy duty bar. Oh, it's a heavy duty bar, but, but they're still low profile. It's only vertical weight right. on, in that application. You don't have to worry about the weight being away from the wall and pulling away from it's the wall. Pure, it is pure it's sheer just weight. Straight sheer weight from top to bottom. This gives you a lot more flexibility on electrical outlets and low voltage boxes Very much beneath so. it. And the packaging that it comes in, it's just a tube. It's yeah. uh, it's honestly about smaller. That size. It's about this size, but it's a little. It's actually smaller than this. Is the packaging that it comes in? I don't know if I have one over there or not. Do I have one on my on my shelf? No. Uh, that's the soundbar mount. No. Nope. But anyway, so it's much small. It's actually smaller than this. Uh, so you it can actually put looks quite like a few this, of them. But twice the thickness. Yeah, exactly. You can put quite a few of them on your truck uh, and have them just in stock and available to you if you're going to be mounting those TVs. I have yet to have anybody call me back to say that they've had an issue with the single bar uh, being mounted in their house. Nothing's been pulled away. I've always caught two studs in my mounting for that to make sure. And that's the key. That's very much so the key. But it's just a very straightforward mount so that you don't have to worry about having both plates there. And it's a really easy for a single person to put up now, in place. The other thing that you don't see because of the size of this, there is a security bar that runs through these. Yes. And the security bar is here for a couple of reasons. One, f you can put a small hasp block on it. Yes, you can. So somebody will not steal the television. Right. So you can use it in a commercial application or right. in, a, in a, Secondly, you know, outside not somewhere. not a big issue in Florida, but it's for earthquakes. Right. Yeah, so if you're in over in California, uh, on, on the West the Coast, northeast. the Northeast, because apparently we're getting earthquakes Georgia. in the Northeast now. Yep. Uh, actually, yeah, we did get earthquakes in Georgia, well, didn't we? Well, we get them here. We just don't feel them. Well, we, we get the, well, that's true, because we got all the sand to dampen it. Yeah. Um, so it, it's still something that is, uh, you know, a concern for people in those areas where they're having to deal with the earthquakes, but it's there as a security feature for that. we also that. use that same format in a tilt. Yes, we do. Which are very nice. Yeah. And again, you have the ability for a lot of space underneath for outlets and low voltage. Right. So this actually, the nice thing about this is, is it gives you the tilt functions with the single bar uh, capabilities. It's still at 100 pounds or 150 pounds. I don't know if you can read that from the size that we have here, but the T, uh, CSTM44E has a 100 pound capability and the TL64E uh, has 150 pounds. Uh, and By the way, what yeah. do the numbers mean in the part number? So, I don't know. You tell I me. I do. You, do you now? Yes, because Stuart and I attempted to standardize this. Okay. The 64 means 600 by 400. Ah, that's the biggest it goes. Yeah, see, originally we did it with inches. Okay. And then we realized that, well... The size doesn't the matter. The size doesn't matter. Yeah. Because the TVs, initially, they were heavy, you know. It's like, right. well, okay. We, right. You know, we want it to be... We don't want you to put anything bigger than a 50 or whatever. Right. But right. then we changed it over to VESA pattern. So... The TL64E is 600 by 400. Right. The TL44E is what? 400 by 400. Exactly. The 44E for the fixed mount? 400 by 400. Yep. Now, you're going to see, for example, the LP64PL, which has post leveling screws on it. Right. So, let's. Now, it looks a lot like the LP2642. Well, but it's not. It's not. And the reason is, is, is the back plate's the same, basically, between the two of them. In fact, I think it is the same back plate. Um, the post leveling is actually in the arms that attach yes. to the TV. Now, let's talk about post leveling. Here's why post leveling is important. It's not because the installer doesn't know how to make sure your mount is level. It's actually because getting the TV level after the mount is level is actually a process in in of its own. Or to the room. Right. So when you look at... This is, we're going to do a single back bar for my ease of drawing. Sure. You have two vertical bars that connect to the television. Now, you can get this level, mm -hmm. and you can put these on the back of the TV and get them in the same spot on the screw heads. Right. But what happens is when you get it up, the ceiling may not be dead level. Right. And I don't care how this looks on a level when you put that bubble up there. Right. If it doesn't look level to the room, the customer's not Happy. So this is actually one of my favorite uh, terminologies that I came up with myself, actually. I was very proud of myself for coming up uh -oh. with this. There's really level, and then there's pretty level. <laughs> 
<laughs> so really level, the, uh, t uh, you could mount a TV and it can be perfectly level. Now that's really level when you use your level, you got your bubble you know, level out there and everything's perfectly level. You're using it's a real level, really, not that little tiny yep, thing? Nope, you're using like a, a nice you know, four foot level you know, to get everything measured out there and, and perfectly straight across. But then you look at it and it's, it feels like it's you know, off axis a little bit. So, no, that one's because I, I went too quickly well, and I mounted it camera. incorrectly. But So, then the client walks in and says, ah, it looks like it's on level. What'd you do? And, you and you're like, it is 100% level. And you take your level out, you put it on top of the TV, and you show them the TV straight across is nice and level. But they're happy. I'm sorry, your house is not level. So, then you That's have pretty, the pretty level because the pretty level makes it level to what everything else is around it. So, it's pretty. It's pretty. Exactly. Really so, level and pretty level. With the with the LPs the, the after installation adjustment right there are screws that go down to the top of the mount through the arm right so the arms are mounted to the television and you got your basic screws to the vessel pattern mm -hmm. you hang it on the bar yep and you look at the room yep and if it doesn't look right you can tighten the screw up and it raises the arm up in relation to the bar right yep so this gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility to match the room. It also allows you to have a brand new employee who may not be as conscientious as he should be. Right. And make it level. Right. So it's still important to make sure your back plate is level, um, even if it's, you know, again, really level, even if it's not pretty level. So you really want to have that back plate as level as possible for a couple reasons. One, if it would take quite a bit for it to happen because of friction and everything else, but we don't want the possibility of the TV sliding across that backplate. And if the backplate is correctly level, is really level, then that means that it's not going to be able to slide left or right without somebody going up there and actually moving it. Then you could use the post leveling after the fact and actually give that TV the correct leveling aspect to make it pretty level. Yes. So that's another reason why so I like... So that's what PL stands for, not post level. It's pretty level. Pretty level. It's pretty level. Um, that's why I like the articulated mounts because most of the articulated mounts, in fact, I think all of the articulated mounts that we sell have, have an adjustment an adjustment for that uh, post leveling. But on an articulated mount, do you know why it's important to have it on, on an articulated mount when the versus the other? When the arm comes out, any discrepancy at all is amplified. And it's extremely amplified. And in fact, it's also because when you take the TV out from the wall and then you turn it that 90 degrees or however far you're turning it, their wall may not be perfectly plumb straight up and down. No. Which means that, I'm sorry, but your builder did something incorrectly. Well, it's drywall. It's, you know, and the drywall is pushing it out a little bit. So when you turn that, it may have been perfectly level when it was straight on from the, or flat up against the wall. But now that you've actually pulled it out from the wall and you've turned it, the wall itself is maybe tilted in, you know, a little bit. And so now that forces the TV to be cockeyed uh, from one way or the other. So that gives you that post-leveling capability Ooh, to straighten it out. Right? Geometry. Geometry. Yeah, exactly. So, this is something we very much recommend is having the PL capability. Yes, yes definitely. So, with all of that, we've kind of gone over, you know, a large majority of the different types of mounts that, that are out there. Well, pardon me, we went over the three major mounts that are out there. Now, there's a couple other ones available as well. We have, of course, the ceiling mounts. You have, of course, the in-wall mounts that we discussed earlier. Um, we have, of course, the, uh, the tailgate cart. mount. Yeah, and the rolling cart. And the rolling cart. Oh, so, I like the rolling cart. Yeah, the rolling um, cart's nice. Uh, I think, actually, the TV on the rolling cart's in the conference room Yes, right we now. have a couple yeah. of them around here for use, and, and because along with putting TVs on them, we also hang our our wire racks for yep. all of our wires, our test racks for our multi-viewers. Yes, yep, we use that as well. Because we have to have a place to hang multiple televisions. Yep. Yep. So, and, but you don't want to wipe out the wall space, so right. it, it lives elsewhere when we're not using it. Right, so we're going to be working on stuff like that as well. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm thinking about the possibility of adding one to our space here with our whiteboard on it, so that you can actually, do, we can draw on the whiteboard behind us uh, mm. and have that fully available so you can ha see us there on screen as we draw on it. Um, so. With all of that in mind, we've kind of talked about the tips and tricks and different ways to do the installation. And uh, even after the fact of after doing the installation of, you know, for an articulated mount, moving it side to side so that you can have it up well, there correctly. Well, I'd like correctly. to cover a couple of things on the installation. Yeah. Um, guys love to use impact drivers. Right. Because they're simple. I'm not a big fan of impact drivers because it's easy for them to over torque and actually bend the frame and cause deflection. Okay. So I actually um, like my impact driver. I know you do, and uh, a lot of guys do. Yeah. Um, 
Leo, do you use an impact driver or do you uh, do you use something different when you're when you're mounting your your TVs on the wall? It's a lot like putting ceiling speakers in. If you over torque one of the screws on a ceiling speaker, yep, it that flange is no longer symmetrical. Right. So for me, what I like to do is the impact driver. I just make sure I'm a little bit more cautious whenever I'm using it. I use a slightly underpowered uh, impact, which it's still a, a so you actually pretty back decent. the clutch off. Uh, yeah, just a little bit, and then I go ahead and run it in that way, and it just makes life a little bit easier for me. It's nice and loud. I like the, the ugga duggas as you you know put the the, the bolt in, into the wall. It's kind of fun. So not a big fan of that. Um, washers. Now, when you look at our toolkits, right? I'm move this back out of the way. Go for it. When you look at our toolkits. There's a lot of stuff in these kits. Now, I am going to tell you that invariably somebody brings out a new TV with a screw length and our diameter. That's different. That's different. It happens, in it fact. It does. You know, you, you try to keep up with all of this, but it does happen. That is why we actually have this guess. over here. This Samsung? Yep, this pack here. Uh, just walked off camera to grab it. Where uh, Samsung came out with a TV that uh, wound up not uh, having a completely different uh, VESA pattern. Um, and bolt size. And, and bolt, side, uh, bolt size. So we actually had to get a bolt size that was much longer uh, in order to reach from where the mount was to the inside of the TV where the threading was. Now the other thing to remember is not all bolts have the same depth on a television. Sony, for example, yes. will have shallower bolts at the top. Yep. Then at the bottom, do not screw through your panel. Yeah. Um, we're back to don't use impact drivers. <laughs> okay, on the TV, I do not use an impact driver. Um, on I the highly mount, recommend using a hand-operated screwdriver. I do. Yes, for that one, I, I definitely do. Because it's if you're dealing with the electronics and whatnot, in fact, I, I'll use it even on a, on a rack when I'm mounting stuff into a rack. I like to use the, the regular screwdriver instead of using something like a drill yep. or something because it's super easy to cross-thread on a, on a rack. And on the back of a TV, it's not as easy to do it, but if you have one with the really small uh, screws for mounting, it's pretty easy to cross-thread that. So we don't want to do that. And, and you, again, you just you don't want to pierce the panel. And guys have pierced the panels. Yes. It's like, well, it's an M8. Well, it's an M8 what? Yeah, how deep is it at that point? So Leo says that he uses low speed, so one, uh, and no impact. Now, Leo, is that when you're going into the TV or is that when you're going into the wall for the mount? Let me yeah, know. Yeah, you can't use a one to go into the wall. Yeah, I was going to say, one's going to go into it. It's going to just sit there and spin. So, one other thing that happens for me when I'm doing it, the 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 mounting the TV to the wall or mounting the mount to the wall, pardon me, is when we when I'm trying to put it on the wall, a lot of times, and I'll be honest, I'm by myself I mean, when I'm doing an installation like this. And so I, it would be great to have a second person there because they can hold the mount on the wall in place once we've got it level, then I can make my marks and do the drilling and mount it into place. Now, when you're by yourself, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. So one thing that I like to do whenever I put it up there, I don't actually use the templates uh, that come with the mounts. I like to use the mount itself as my template. Lay and it down so, on the ground? Well, I'll lay it down on the ground, but what I'll do, is I'll put it up on the wall and I'll get it where I want it where I want it to be. I'm not going to worry about how it's level at that point. I'm going to get it where I want it to be. Now this is this is a quick and dirty installation. This is not something where somebody has sunken the TV into the wall uh, or they haven't you know or, or they've done you know something like that to where I have you to have really prepping. you know making make sure it's perfectly level and, and perfectly inside that space. So are you talking hang and bang? Hang and bang. So we uh, you made me say that um, the. Uh, so when, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and drill out one hole for the one side of where I want it to be at. Then I'll put the mount up and I'll put in the lag for that one side. Then from there, then using the other side, I'll use that as like a pivot point to get the mount up to a spot, put my level on it, make my mark, hang it back down, drill the hole, mount it back up in place, and now I'm now, level. And see, in the old days, and it's no longer the case, we would use the center hole for that. Right. And that's gone now for a good reason. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We uh, pulled the drywall off. Yep. In multiple cases. So, Brent, I think we're running out of time for what we're talking about today. Okay, uh, well, before we go, what's our next show? So, we have, and I'm prepared today, I've got my notes here to let me know what we've got going on. So, um, before we go, the next couple shows that we have, of course, this Friday at 3 p.m., 3 p.m., uh, we are going to be talking about the HDMI extenders and which one to use in which case. So we're going to kind of take like today's episode, but we're going to do the same thing with HDMI extenders. We're going to talk about how far they can go, which ones you should use at certain distances, feature what kind sets. of applications, feature sets, and whatnot. We'll talk about that as well. So 
definitely check in this Friday at 3 p.m. for that episode. Next week on Wednesday, we're going to be talking about surveillance and storage. Now, and see, how this you can... one excites me a lot because this is a yeah. call we get a fair amount of. Okay, I've got eight cameras. How long will my recorder work? Yep. Yep, well, exactly. Sir, let's talk about your settings. My what? Yep, exactly. So when you are going in and having the, oh, okay, I see what he's saying here. He's saying low speed, not the, not the clutch. He, he, ah, he leaves that, yeah, he's doing okay. torque, not, not the clutch. Okay, Thanks, so Leo, for one. clarifying. Yeah, he's on one speed, not the, not the clutch uh, release on that. Anyways, so yes, going to the surveillance. Yeah, so this is a call that we get a lot about. We'll, we'll talk about that, about how to maximize the amount of storage that you have uh, and for the scenario that you're using it in. I'm actually really excited as well to talk about this because, again, it is this a call. Is math. It's math, and it's a call that we get quite a bit. Uh, and so we'll, we're going to talk about that at that time. And then next Friday, uh, fr probably the following Friday, we'll be talking Which is about a week, Friday. a week Friday. We'll be talking about troubleshooting 102. We're, we're bringing it back. We did troubleshooting 101 a couple months back. We're going to be doing troubleshooting 102. Uh, and in that one, we're going to be talking about it's the little things in life. Yes, and this is really a lot of at least HDMI calls. Now don't give it away. No, but don't it's give it away. Because it's, it's, uh, we're really excited is, about talking about this one. This one's a fun one. Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, we got a phone call, and we're going to be talking about how that phone call went. We're going to be talking about why it took us 45 minutes to figure it out. To find out what was wrong. I uh, know why it took 45 minutes because I didn't show up for 43 of those oh, 45. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I see how it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, we'll, we'll be talking about did, that you one. Feel so, you that guys. Bus go uh, right I, over yep, you. I saw it. I saw it. Uh, I saw it, and I stayed there, anyways. The. Um, so check in with us on Friday. We're going to be talking about why we missed it, what we missed, and how important it is to catch it early. Uh, that way you can get off the phone within, you know, well before and 45 minutes. And you can make minutes. more money and look smarter. Yep, exactly. So we'll talk about it then, guys. Again, thank you for checking in with us. As always, leave your comments down in the chat or in the comment section below. Leave your questions, any comments that you have about what we talked about today. If you have different thought processes or different ways that you like to do a mount, uh, on the wall, if, you, if you're a single person doing it or if you're a dual person doing it, do you allow your technicians to go out by themselves to do a TV mount or do you make sure that you always have two people? Uh, I always wanted to make sure that I had two people, but unfortunately I didn't, I didn't have the manpower the in order to do that. I didn't have the luxury for it, so I had to figure out how to do it with just one person. So let us know down in the comments. Let us know down in the chat. Um, send me an email, of course, if you have any questions about anything else. And also let us know if, you if there's anything you would like us to talk about that we haven't talked about yet. Or is there a topic that we should go over again? Or if we talk too much on something. Oh, yeah, let us know. It, all we're looking for is just more information from you to us to let us know what's going on. Um, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Yep. Subscribe to YouTube. Yep. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Yep. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. And don't forget to reboot. Often and early. Thanks, everybody. Thank we'll, you. We'll talk to you later.